Michelle Decking. Uh, he's been uh, working on combinatorics on words uh, since the 70s, I guess. My favorite paper of his is the one from 1979 on the avoidance of abelian repetitions uh, in words. Yeah, that um, was a very short paper. <laughs> yes, it was short, but very nice. Um, <laughs> And if I'm not mistaken, he is now a uh, emeritus professor at the Delft University of Technology. Right. Um, so he'll be speaking today on the structure of Zeckendorf representations and base phi expansions. Okay, thank you, Narad. Uh, yeah, I, I put the, the short abstract below here because I made a, a slight change i said i will answer the following questions i changed that i will try to answer the following questions uh, because the base phi expansions are more complicated than i thought first okay uh, uh, i last week i was in the in a museum and there were um a lot of tapestries. If you look down here, you can see that this is a tapestry. And in some sense, I thought this is this is connected to my to my talk. It's uh, so that's why I show it to you. And then uh, the artist is called Yakov Agam, and he uh, has said about his work that the image needs to evolve, not exist. And that sort of made me think also of the, the, the famous discussion about mathematics uh, created or invented. Uh, this lecture will more be uh, about discoveries than uh, about inventions. There's, there's one very small invention, which is very interesting, which I will point out at the moment I get there. Okay. Uh, so first I talk about Zeckendorf representations. They have been also been called Fibonacci representations. Uh, so you take the Fibonacci numbers, 0, 1, 1, et cetera. Uh, and then, uh, so Fn plus one equals Fn plus Fn minus one. And then it's, known that you can read, write any natural number n uniquely as a, a sum of uh, Fibonacci numbers. So the, you express that by putting uh, a di in front, which is zero or one. If you require that the uh, di, di plus one equal one, one is not allowed. And of course you also, uh, you don't want any leading zeros. And I will write Zn is, uh, so this, this, is, this is always a finite sum, of course, and it starts somewhere at, at L. And I will write it in this order, like we do for, for ordinary numbers. It's, it's very strange that I don't get any feedback. <laughs> uh, I hope everybody can follow this. Well, this is not too difficult. It's good, uh, Michel. It's all good. What? It's all good. Okay. <laughs> Here's one example, uh, Z6. So the, 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 the expansion, the uh, representation of six is one, zero, zero, one, uh, because you, you start at five, four, three, two. And f5 is equal to one, and f2 is, uh, is, is equal to five, and f2 is equal to one. So that's why you get z, z6 is 1001. Okay, now next, uh, there are base phi expansions. And these are also known on the various names beta expansions. I have also seen alpha expansions. Um, this exists already for a long time but mostly for real numbers. And uh, here today, I will be only be interested in integers of natural numbers. So a natural number is written in base phi if it has this form, uh, where now we have powers of phi. So this is a very natural generalization of the base 10 or base two. 
uh, you take an irrational base, namely the golden mean. Or that you do not allow one one. And if you do so, then there's a unique way to write n uh, like as a, as a sum like this. But now uh, we also need the negative, of course, we need the, the negative powers of phi. And so the expansion, uh, although still finite, will be uh, with positive powers and negative powers. And I, just as we do to base 10 numbers, I, I, do, I write from left to right, and I put a, a dot between d0 and d minus 1. So example is beta 5 is 1000, 1001. Uh, now we have 3, 2, uh, 0, 1, 0. So we start at phi cube. And then we have a phi minus 1, and we have a phi minus 4. And you can see that if you add these, you get the number 5. OK. Now, uh, do I miss something? Yeah, I missed something. So here I have uh, for you, written for you uh, some of the, ex the, the representations and expansions. So this is this is Zeckendorf, and this is uh, the, the the beta expansions or base phi expansions. So Zeckendorf is uh, you ha only have zero words of zeros and ones, and here you have words of zeros and ones and dot, and then again a word of zeros and ones. Um, uh, and you may ask, tell me something about this. <laughs> representation expansion. Now there's the, the two big differences. So the first one is that the Zeckendorf expansion is a shift invariant. That means that if you have a certain combination of zeros and ones appearing, so here at, at the end, then it will also be occur uh, one shifted to the right. It will also occur two shifted to the right, et cetera, et cetera. So really all combinations will occur in all positions. And this is different from for the, for the beta uh, expansion, because if you take, for instance, the 1001 block, uh, you see it occur here. And uh, so this is one before the end. And here you see it occur two before the end. So you, if you look at this, you might expect to see it somewhere here, but it isn't there. Uh, and in fact, you can prove that it will never occur here at the end of this positive part of the, the beta expansion. So there is no shift in variance. Uh, the second difference is, of course, that uh, for the beta expansions, you can also uh, uh, express real numbers, and then and in general, of course, you, there will be infinite expansions, while here you only can do integers. So, yeah, this might be a question to the audience, if the audience <laughs> would be there, uh, if people have, because you, you, you might use the uh, 1 over Fibonacci numbers as, as numbers smaller than 1, and then do a gradient algorithm and make a sort of a an extension of these second or expansions to all real numbers, and but I have never seen that. Okay. Now you might think that there is some sort of there must be some sort of relation between these two ways of writing integers, and in fact there is, and there's a paper by. Uh, Christian Fourier and Jacques Sakharovich, uh, which dates already from 21 years back, uh, where they describe a two-tape automaton, where you put in the second door of representation and you get out the base phi expansion. Uh, it, this is an, a very nicely written paper, and I have uh, read it many times, but I sort of do not understand really how it works. Uh, 
uh, that's one motivation for me to, to, to take a very basic uh, approach and to, to say something more about these expansions, representations and expansions. Now here, uh, yeah, how, how do you say something about that? Uh, here you see a lot of beta uh, of uh, base phi expansions. And uh, yeah, how, how do you attack this? Now, there's a sort of general trick in mathematics that if something is very complicated, you sort of project it on something simpler. Uh, and not too simple. Uh, and that's still, the, this, this projection might give you some insight of what's going on. So what I want to do is I want to compare Zeckendorf and base phi, but in a, in a simple way. Uh, and what is a, a, a natural way? A natural way is to take the sum of all the digits. That's sort of projection. So, and not only that, but uh, I, I even take it modulo two. So I only get zeros and ones for each natural number. N, I get a zero or a one, which is the sum of the digits modulo two. Uh, and it's well known that the sequence you get in this way is a morphic sequence. Uh, and the morphism is a morphism on four symbols, uh, which is closely related to the, uh, the, the Fibonacci morphism. And there's a letter-to-letter -letter projection, lambda. You send one to zero, two to one, three to zero, and four to one. So the, the fixed point starting with one of this morphism is one, two, four, four, three, four, three. And then you send one to zero, you get this zero, two to one, you get this one. And the two fours give you the two ones over here, etc. So So uh, this is the morphic representation of this somewhat two. Uh, and you will find it in, in the book by Lucien Shalit, uh, in example 7A2. Uh, but there's a small problem but, uh, because they give a morphism on six letters, but it's, it's easy to see that you sort of can merge uh, pairs, two pairs of letters, and then you essentially, you get this morphism, what's over here. Uh, you can also find it in the literature in a paper uh, called an analog of the two Morse sequence. Okay, now, yeah, um, this is a talk, and every, every talk should have a proof, but I, I, I think I don't give any proof. Uh, and as compensation, uh, I will give you conjectures. And uh, here is the first conjecture is coming. And th there will be four conjectures, and this, uh, I think the, they are of a very different difficulty. I don't know how difficult, but they, some, are, some are very, very, very difficult. So here, um, I take this fixed point I talked about it on the previous slide. So it's the fixed point of this morphism. And I look at the subword complexity function. I mean, I want to know more about this sequence exact, x, x of z, and, and one thing would, would this, that it would be nice to to, to know what is this support complexity function. And uh, of course, P1 is equal to four, P2, and then there, there are 10 words of, uh, of length two, there's 16 of length three, etc. And so you see these differences are six all the time. So you might think that maybe this is quasi stermian but of course, if you think a little bit louder, then that's, you see that cannot be true. So what I did, I define uh, an infinite word on the alphabet six eight, uh, which is six eight double six double eight three times six three times eight. So it's six to the power f two eight to the power f two six to the power etc. Uh, you see where this name naming ff comes from. Um, and the conjecture is that starting uh, from uh, n is six, 
these differences exactly follow the sequence. Uh, okay, I hope you understand. It, it's really difficult to give a talk with so few feedback. Uh, so there are certainly some experts in the audience who know uh, to whom uh, this gives uh, uh, some sort of idea that this is related to the uh, support complexity function of the two or more sequence. For two or more, uh, you, instead of six and eight, you have two and four. And in, in, instead of the Fibonacci numbers, you have uh, powers of two. So this is a really, I think this is really nice that there's some sort of correspondence between these two famous, uh, or at least uh, two more is the famous uh, sum of digits mod two, for, but then for binary. And what I just said, you can find in this paper by Black. Michelle, you wanted some feedback. So here's some feedback. Yeah. Yeah, so yes. your conjecture can be proven uh, automatically, at least in theory, using uh, the Walnut system. And uh, um, maybe I'll try to get uh, one of my students to do that. Okay, Th yeah. that would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I and now I realize that, that this is not what I really want because this is uh, the before the projection by the letter to letter map. So this is on four on four letters. Uh, so this is not yet two or more. So. Yeah, you could do either uh, one. Yeah. Sorry? Either one can be done, at least in theory. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so now the next, in the next slide, I do the, I do the projection. So, because that's interesting me even more, if I take the sum of digits mod two, so that's after the projection. Uh, so now it's a zero one word. So of course, P one is two, P two is four, and you get eight, 14. It looks a bit more complicated. Uh, but I do something very similar, and now I, I define an infinite word xf also on 6, 8. And uh, uh, so you get 6 to the power x2. And for 8, it's the same. You have a to the f2, a to the f3, a to the f4. Uh, but there is here, there's not f2 here and f3 here, but there's x2. So x2 is equal to 2, x3 is equal to 1, x4 is equal to 4 x5 is equal to 4. Well, xn is the absolute value of the order correct district of the Boolean complex of the Coxeter group A n. Well, of course, I'm joking. I mean, it's true what I just said, but I'm joking. Uh, you might like more this expression here, which is uh, xn is the nth Fibonacci plus or minus 1. So this is, uh, uh, this is indeed plus one. So I get a double six here. This is minus one. So uh, I get two minus one is six here, etc. And I have a similar conjecture that the differences in the complexity function are given by that sequence. Okay. Yeah, Jeff. <laughs> The next two conjectures will not be the, uh, be possible to do by Walnut. Uh, so now let's do the sum of digits for base phi because I said I uh, to you I want to compare second order with base phi and I do this on uh, with this sort of projected uh, quantity. So I take the sum of of course now there the, are more. I go from left to right. I take take the sum and take it. And again, that is a morphic sequence. Uh, but uh, it is a bit more complicated. So I need eight symbols, and also uh, the lengths are uh, a bit larger than in, for the previous morphism. And again, there's a, a little letter to letter map. Half of them is mapped to zero, and the other half is mapped to one. I get a, a fixed point. I take the fixed point starting with one. Um, 
And then uh, one can show that this projection gives uh, this S beta sequence. Uh, and it's in the paper, which I give here below. Yeah, before I stop with this, uh, um, uh, I, I will give you the other two conjectures. So there's a very nice uh, work uh, uh, on, the, on the two of Morse sequence by uh, Dormota, Modui, and Rivat. Namely, that if you take in the two of Morse sequence S2, the, the subsequence of squares, then you get a normal sequence. So this is pseudo, pseudo randomness. There are many notions of pseudo randomness, but this is pseudo randomness in a very strong sense that all the all the words appear and they appear in the right sequences if you walk through the squares, which is completely different from what happens if you take just n here. Um, so conjecture three: if I take the sum of ditches. Uh, mod 2 for Zeckendorf, I get a normal sequence. Conjecture 4, if I take the sequence of the beta expansion in the, in the squares, I get a normal sequence. And of course, I have uh, uh, empirical evidence for this. And in fact, I think it, it sort of seems that these are even better distributed than, uh, than for uh, the two Morse sequence. But I think this will be, especially this one, will be very hard to prove. Uh, and certainly not with the, with the help of Walnut. Uh, okay, yeah, I put this here to remind myself and you that uh, we get a, uh, a new part. So th this uh, some of Ditch's stuff is finished now. And I go to something else. I go to BT sequences, uh, probably also known by many of you. So it, uh, I have a BT sequence a, a, a n, which is n alpha, where I take alpha some positive number. This is the floor function. I take B n, which is in beta, and beta, this beta a positive real number. And suppose that they set as one over alpha plus one over beta is equal to one, then you can prove that they are complementary sequences. That means that they are disjoint and together they cover the, all the natural numbers. And of course, uh, 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 in this case, I mean, the whole talk I will only be uh, occupied with the golden mean. If I take alpha, the golden mean phi, and I take beta, uh, the golden mean squared, I get these two sequences, which are very famous sequences, the lower Witthoff sequence and the upper Witthoff sequence. There are really hundreds of papers about these two sequences. And uh, of course, they, they satisfy the BT condition. Uh, 1 over 5 plus 1 over 5 squared equal 1. I mean, if you multiply this by 5 squared, you see that immediately. Okay, now, uh, an important role in this whole thing is played by the compositions of these two sequences A and B, known as compound Witthoff sequences. Uh, and we write these compositions as word over the motor generated by A and B. So for example, AB is the sequence which at N is equal to A at B of N. Now here's the invention, uh, generalized BT sequences. These are really very, very useful. Uh, so again, we take an irrational number larger than one and the generalized BT sequences so a beta sequence is where you have just n alpha here, but I take p times n alpha plus q times n plus r, where p and q and r, so that there are three parameters which are integers. And this is in a paper by Jean-Paul and me. And there is, uh, if not so very hard to prove, is there's an interesting lemma 
which is extremely useful. Uh, so again, I take the generalized beta sequence with the golden mean. And then I suppose I have one V and I compose V with A and I compose V with B. Then again, you get generalized beta sequences and, uh, and there are some nice formulas for the parameters. We start with PQR and then VA has P plus QPR minus P and VB has two P plus Q, P plus QR. Uh, example, uh, start with the, the Witthoff sequence itself, AN. And this is general nice peak sequence with parameters one, zero, zero, of course. And now then look at the iterated Witthoff sequence. There are also dozens of people written on this sequence AA. Uh, so that is equal to one, four, six, et cetera. And then uh, I can just take uh, one plus zero is equal to one, uh, put a one here, and then I get P is one and R minus P is minus one. So this sequence is a generalized bit, bit sequence with parameters one, one, minus one. Okay, and this lemma is from the paper with Jean-Paul. Uh, yeah, there's a slight technical detail that uh, uh, if, if I'm going to talk about occurrences of blocks at the end of the expansion, then uh, I supplement with zeros. So that, for example, the, the, the occurrence of zero, one, zero, the first occurrence is not over here, but it is over here because I have this uh, zero. So if, if I am uh, in the interval till the uh, Fn, zero, zero, two, Fn minus one, then I supplement zero so that they all get the same length. It's no big deal, but you have to know that. Okay, so now I'll, uh, I'm going to formulate what I mean by a second of structure. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to find out uh, what are ending digits, digit blocks of the expansion. So, I take Z and ZL till D0, and uh, I fix a word uh, double W, and what are the ends such that you see this word uh, at the end of the expansion? And I write RW for this sequence of occurrences. So we, we saw uh, here 0, 1, 0 was for n equal 2, and 0, 1, 0 was there for n equal 7. Uh, so zero and zero will be the sequence two, seven, etc. Now, it turns out that these sequences are always generalized PT sequences and almost always they are also compound Witthoff sequences. And that I will denote by CW, so that, that will be a, a word of A's and B's. Yeah. Of course, people have been interested in these kind of questions, especially in the in the last digit, uh, the, the D zero of the Zeckendorf. And uh, there are also some more complicated results. And there's a, a pioneering paper by Carlitz, Scovel and Hoggart uh, from 1972. And uh, yes, yeah, some of those main results give these uh, compounds uh, with how compositions for some special words. So there's the word one zero to the two n plus one. It has this compound Witthoff representation. And this, so this is for uh, an odd power of zeros and for an even power of zeros, you get this one. And then later in the paper, they also uh, do uh, this one and this one and uh, you get sort of similar expressions. Now, here is my key lemma, uh, in which I use to prove all these, all, all these structure things. So I take a word of zeros and ones, and I take the first reading from, from left to right, I take the first equal to zero, uh, why I do this because 
um, I want to put one longer. So I, I extend it to the left. And if, if it was one, then there's only one extension maybe because there's no one one allowed. Uh, there would be only one word. So that's the reason why I take a zero over here. And then I can talk about the, the, the word zero, W and one W. And they satisfy this nice uh, uh, characterization that the, 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 the compound word associated to zero W is CW composed with A and one W is CW composed with B. And uh, yeah. I, I sort of said uh, uh, that Carl Scoven Hoggett, if they had known this lemma or realized this lemma, uh, then they could have saved a lot of work. Because look at this: if if you have this one, uh, and I extend to the to the left, uh, of course, first I have to write a zero, and 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 that of course has the same sequence b to the n plus one a uh, followed by a and if i can extend a little once more by zero i can use this key lemma and just put an a here so that means that the, these uh, four results just follow very easily from the top two by this key lemma okay so here is the the the, the main theorem uh, you, you fix a word W of zeros and ones containing no double one. And then there are two exceptional cases, namely the word W equal just one of length one, or the W is uh, only zeros. So if you exclude these for the time being, then the sequence RW of, of currents of number n such that the m lowest digits of the second number extension of n are equal to W. So you see the the word W as ending block. Um, then this is a compound width of sequence CW. Uh, so one and zero and do satisfy this uh, statement, but all words satisfy also uh, one and zero to M that uh, you can also write it as a compound, uh, as a uh, generalized BT sequence. So uh, here is the sequence A, and this is so RW at, uh, at N is, of course, FM times AN plus M, F, M minus one times N. This is the identity function plus some real. This is the third parameter of the GBS, uh, which I call gamma W, because of course it will depend on W. And uh, where you have to look at is whether the word starts with zero or with one. And, but the difference is not large. You just get a, a, a one higher Fibonacci uh, coefficient here over here. And there's some negative integer gamma w at the end. And I don't give it to you now, uh, but there, there is an explicit formula for, for gamma w. You can, you can just look at w and know what gamma what gamma W has to be. And in the, in the exceptional cases where the, it was not a compound width of, width of sequence, well, it's very close to a compound width of sequence because the R1 is uh, the compound width of sequence B, but you have to subtract one. And the same is true, same, same kind of thing is true for uh, zero to the N. You have to take A to the M and subtract one. Okay, so well, it took, it's nice to, Look at this result uh, at the at the beginning for small w, and then uh, 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 it's it's sort of natural to do this on the Fibonacci tree. So I start with the empty word. There's no information at all. If you have w zero, then the compound uh, sequence is a minus one, and and this is of course also the generalized BT sequence. If you take w equal one, then you get the compound sequence is B minus one. And then here you can, you get this iterated A sequence. It's another way to represent it. And, uh, and so this goes on. And so if, if, if you split, uh, well, this is not a, not a good example here. If, if you split, so you start with zero, one, and you split in zero, zero, one, and one, zero, one, 
uh, you just add an A at the end of AA and you add an B at the end of AA for the, uh, the one branch. And uh, for the RW, it's also very simple because you, you use this key lemma, uh, for instance, this R double, uh, you, the, the three here comes from uh, uh, one double zero. So it is two times the one in front of the A plus the one in front of the identity. So that's the two plus Q and you add the P and the Q. So this one plus one is, is two. And then, uh, sorry, uh, the minus two is the is the R, which is copied from here to there. Okay, so this are, uh, is about the second door blocks. Uh, what's not in this talk is that you can also talk about blocks occurring at position K, uh, but I don't want to make things more complicated than it already is. Uh, and we go now to the base phi expansions. So, um, and uh, we have this to do all these things in one. So I split in the in the positive part at the left of the decimal point and a negative part at the, at the right of the decimal. So I will treat them separately. Uh, so, uh, boop, 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 boop. so here are the, the base phi uh, expansions for of the first 20 numbers. And to analyze these, um, I sort of look at the, at the neighborhood of the decimal point. So I, I look at the digits one, zero and minus one. Uh, and well, you might think uh, to start with, there are eight possibilities, but three, uh, you lose three because of the no double one requirement. Uh, but there's, there's, there's also a fifth which differ, uh, disappears. Uh, it, you can prove that 101 will never occur as digit uh, d1, d0, d minus one. So you're left with these four, and I've coded all the numbers uh, according to the occurrences. So uh, if you have 10.0, .0 you, you write an A. If you have uh, 00.0, .0, you write a B, etc. And so you get a sequence here, which tells you a lot about these expansions. Uh, so one of the things is, for, for example, if you look at the beta minus, uh, these three are the same, and these three are the same, and this one is different, and these three are the same. And if they are the same, they always correspond to A, B, C, and if they are the one which is different, corresponds to D. Uh, and there's something nice about these, uh, this coding. Uh, so, so pick a morphism gamma A equal AB, a gamma B equal C, gamma C equal D, gamma D equal ABC. And then the, the coding sequence, at least if you start from two, is the unique fixed point of this morphism. That's very helpful. Uh, and it's also interesting that if you take this A, B, C, uh, these three where right, you have the same beta minus, if you take them together, and if, if I take gamma, so the gamma of A, B, C is A, B, C, D, and the gamma of D is A, B, C. So you see that if you, again, recode A, B, C as zero and D is one, you get uh, the Fibonacci morphism. So that gives you the, the the, the regularity in these triples and singletons in the, in the expansion of beta minus. Okay, uh, well, these things can be found in this paper by me, which has appeared this year. Uh, so we, now we have to say something about the Lucas numbers, uh, because what the, the, the Fibonacci numbers are for Zeckendorf, the Lucas numbers are for base phi. 
Uh, so I, I think everybody knows them. Uh, what is nice about the Lucas numbers is that they have a very simple uh, base phi expansion. So the, the, because L2n is equal to phi to the 2n plus phi to the minus 2n. So you get uh, a one at the beginning, uh, the, the dl, the d left digit, and the dr left are ones, and they're only zero in between. Uh, there's also a rather nice formula for uh, the odd Lucas numbers, but it gives a bit of problems because it's not so nice as the even ones. So uh, to uh, analyze the whole thing, you, you divide the, the natural numbers into Lucas intervals, which is also not completely trivial how you do this, because I start here at even and I include the odd. And for this one, I do odd plus one and I stop just right before the next even. And this, so this interval gets sort of difficulties and I split it into three parts, which I call A and J and then K and. And uh, then I have a, a, a result which, which tells you how you can get the, the, the expansions in an, in, 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 an, in an even Lucas interval from the, 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 the expansion of all the numbers at uh, starting from zero. And it's very simple. Uh, you, you have, so you have this one and one, uh, these are, this is the beta expansion, the, the base phi expansion of L2n. So you have them outside and in the middle you have beta k. So this is uh, nice. Uh, and then you go to, to the odd uh, Lucas intervals and then split them into three pieces and well, you have to do that. And then you have uh, recurrences also where you can express what happens in the interval L2n L2 and L2 and plus one plus k, where k goes in, in, the, in the two previous one and the same for k and the same for j. So this is quite a complicated, uh, at, at least it looks quite complicated, and uh, but I have a, okay, let's look at the next slide. I will tell you the, the history of this theorem. So uh, it dates back to uh, the late 90s. There have been three papers by Evelyn Hart and Evelyn Hart and Laura Sanchez, Gabriella Sanchez and Laura Sanchez. And you sort of find this theorem in there. Um, but uh, th there's a problem that, that this paper uh, gives this result and then say it's proved in this paper. But if you look, you, you cannot find really find the proof over here. So I had a correspondence with these three or, or well, two of them actually. Um, and I asked them to explain me how they pr proved this theorem. And, and they said, well, it's, it's too complicated. It's too long ago. <laughs> uh, they, they, they really didn't know how to, how to do it. So the, the, the proof was uh, formally missing. Uh, and uh, I repaired this. Uh, in a paper, what I think what has yet to appear, how to add two natural numbers in base phi. And uh, well, it's not too complicated. Okay. Um, so now I want to do the same as I did for Zeckendorf. And it appears that uh, it's very important what the D0 digit is. So I can give you here this, this Fibonacci tree. Uh, I, I don't have yet, there are certain no compositions with A and uh, with the, the Witthoff sequences, but there are things which are close to that, but they are not in this sheet. So if you take the word W0, it has, it is a generalized BT sequence and it has this form and um, one zero has, has this form, and of course, zero one has the same form, and then you split in two, and you get this. Um, 
And for the zeros, there's something uh, nasty going on because you don't have a, a one generalized beta sequence, but you have two of them. So for zero, zero, you have A plus two times the identity and you have three A plus the identity plus one. Where this symbol sort of means to say that this, you take the, the, un, the set of the sequence, which is uh, the union of the, the two sequences which you have here. And, and indeed this union is, uh, is a disjoint union. Um, now the surprise comes if you go to the digital blocks ending in one. So uh, if, w, uh, if you take just the word one, and this has a very uh, simple uh, expression. And of course, zero one is the same and you can go to the children zero zero one and one zero and have expressions there too. And, but then something strange happens because uh, one zero zero one does not occur at all at the end of a uh, uh, beta plus uh, expansion. Uh, so, so actually you don't get the Fibonacci tree, but there, there, are, there are loose ends in them. Uh, and that, that's what makes the whole thing uh, really more complicated. Uh, I'm still working on it. <laughs> uh, but here is here's one of the results I can uh, I can prove and can give it to you. So 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 take these words uh, with with half of these your W zero. Then uh, you look at the sequence of recursion such that uh, the, the, these digits occur as uh, this W occurs as end block of these digits. And then this is a generalized BT system with exceptions of the word W, which have suffix one zero to two m one for m is two three, which do not occur at all. So the actually so the, the set of words which can occur is a is a sort of a, is a sort of suffix system. Okay, this was the end. Thank you very much, Michelle. Um, uh, does anyone have any questions uh, for Michelle um, uh, for the recording? I have one little comment. Um, uh, so uh, I was working with uh, Elise Van Damme uh, a, a couple of years ago on a similar problem, Michelle. And yeah. um, what we proved was, I think something related to what you proved, but unfortunately, because I'm such a bad co-author, we never wrote it down, um, <laughs> uh, which is the following, that if you fix uh, a, a particular block and then ask for the set of integers n whose Fibonacci representation ends in this block, which is uh, similar to what you were doing, at least in part, yeah. um, then this uh, if you look at the ith integer in this set written in ascending order, then the, the map that sends i to the ith integer in this set is uh, Fibonacci synchronized. And by that, I mean that there is a finite automaton that accepts the Fibonacci representation of i followed by the ith integer in this set. And that seems to be um, uh, a, a, a weaker version of what you did in the sense that it doesn't explicitly give the, the relationship between uh, the word W and, and this map, but, but it, it shows it is computable. Um, yeah, and, no, 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 uh, I, I agree that, that, that that's a sort of a weaker form, yeah. And, and, and we also did this for uh, Tribonacci and in general, uh, and Bonacci. So exactly the same kind of theorem then can be generalized to these other kinds of numeration systems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's my little comment. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Have you have you anything in in uh, written in that? <laughs> No, my notes are trapped in my office, which I'm not allowed to visit <laughs> because of the pandemic. Uh, okay. We certainly yeah. hope to write it down at one point, but uh, uh, as I said, I'm a bad co-author, so we never did. Okay.
Uh, any other questions for, for Michelle while we're still on camera? Um, I have a comment. Uh, so I'm Jacques Sakharovich. Um, ah, so at, at the beginning, hi. Uh, at the beginning, so you made a comment which remind me of an old uh, cousin of mine. Uh, when we had her at dinner, she said, oh, it's absolutely delicious. And we knew that immediately after she will say, uh, it's delicious, she will stop eating. So you said very kindly that uh, our paper of Christian and I was very nicely written, but you haven't understood nothing about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, just uh, if uh, the community of uh, One World uh, Communators on Word Seminar is interested, uh, uh, I'd be happy to uh, go 20 years back uh, even more than that, because uh, I'm a very bad co-author and it took us several, almost 10 years to complete and to publish the paper. But uh, at some point I could uh, give a talk if you're interested. Oh, oh. that sounds great. I think, uh, yeah. I think the community would be interested. Um, okay. <laughs> so let, let's say in a few months. Okay, thank okay. you. Very good, very good. I, I'm happy I elicited that. <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll put your name down on the list of uh, future speakers. But, well, well uh, I'm now I'm preparing an, uh, uh, a talk on the One World uh, Seminar on Numeration about the carry propagation on systems, which include uh, the Fibonacci system. Also, that's for the uh, 17th of November. So certainly it's, it will be for next year, but with pleasure. Great, uh, thanks very much, Jacques. Uh, does anyone else have any other questions? Uh, I had a quick question, Dan Rust here. Hi, Michelle. Hi. Um, I was wondering if you expected a similar relationship between uh, the golden means and these generalized second off representations that come with them. Uh, the, the metallic means? No, sorry, mean? the metallic means, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, of course, I looked at that. Uh, but there are, uh, it's, it's, it's not exactly the same. Uh, um, for for instance, the the, the iterated uh, a sequence. If if you take the silver mean, then uh, this cannot be written as a composition uh, of of the natural two uh, 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 sequences. So the golden mean is 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 really special. But but you can do things which are a bit similar. But it it's it's not straightforward. So, so it's really because you have the uh, Wittoff sequence being so closely related that makes it useful. Sorry, no, uh, is it really the relationship with the Wittoff sequence which means you can do this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I, I use very much that that, that I uh, that I that that you have this simple thing that if you extend the board with a symbol to the left, you just have to. Uh, extend the the compound Witthoff sequence with a, with, a, with a letter to the right. The, the right. key lemma, and the, the, so the key lemma will not hold anymore. But still, you can do things. But uh, well, I have I've been so busy <laughs> with base phi that that I have not pursued that. Okay, but it's, it's certainly an interesting uh, direction to go. Uh, there are also there are dozens of people, papers on these kind of things. Uh, uh, maybe not going so far as, as I did, but uh, there, there are lots of partial results known. And also the uh, Jacques Sakharovich and, and Christian Fourier have uh, the, the, the result they have on the two tape automaton is, is, is even more general than only the metallic means. They, they take all uh, piso, number, uh, piso units. Uh, that, that, that would be a further generalization. So there, there are things- Piso units. 
Sorry? Quadratic piezo unit. Uh, qu quadratic of course, piezo. Of course quadratic, quadratic piezo unit. Uh, so there, there are things that can be done. Great, thanks. Are there any other questions? Uh, if not, um, we can uh, we can stop the.